And next we're going to hear from Matt Castilli and Tom Abraham on the project evaluation.
So even though parents still want more information about these things, we're seeing large improvements from year to year. Okay, so this is just 2016, 2017 classes on the left, 2016, 2017 grades on the left. Their knowledge or understanding of what classes their child needs to take, what grades their child needs to get as they progress through their education trajectory. Again, blue boxes in the back being the best category, fully understanding what needs to happen. We know we're not always going to get there. We're not always going to be at 100%, but what is really fascinating to me about this is that we are at zero for a complete lack of understanding. So parents have questions, but nobody's in the dark completely, which is fantastic. That means the message and the information is definitely getting across. What are the students telling us? We're holding steady. Mid 90% want to go to school, want to go to college. That's consistent with last year, 2016. Of those that don't tell us, just yes, I want to go, they're not saying no. They're saying they're undecided. It's fifth grade. I can, I can relate to being undecided. As we heard and saw earlier this morning, what the students are telling us, their view of college is important. They're understanding why it's for their goals. How are they going to achieve their goals? They have goals at this point. And they're now linking college to the success of achieving those goals. They're telling us what they want to do. We saw this in the video, right? What do you want to be when you grow up? And this is stunning. As Brent indicated, they have very detailed plans. So when you see things like athletics, some of them want to be coaches. Some of them want to be trainers. When you see medical professions, they don't just say doctor, internal medicine, surgeons. They have real plans, which is amazing. And they're spread out across a huge range of different <coughs> areas. One common theme in many of their responses is, I want to do this so I can help you, help my community. They're looking ahead. I wasn't this advanced when I was in high school. I don't think. They're telling us what they think their biggest challenge is going to be moving forward. Not that they're scared of it, not that they're not going to overcome it, but what they're seeing as the next hurdle. And this is what Wendy was just talking to you about. How to get the process of financial aid going. How to get the, the application filled out. Housing, these sorts of things. So there's clearly a foresight, a path that these students are on, which is amazing at this age. And the last slide I wanted to get through, the thing I want to talk to you about, I'm thrilled that I'm not the only person that had a picture from Arizona. <laughs> this is sort of how I see concept of these pieces of information working. And we have information we're getting from these different entities but they're all feeding back on each other, the double-headed arrows that go both ways. So the students are telling us things that the teachers aren't telling us, but the teachers are telling us things the parents aren't telling us. The parents are telling us things that the students probably aren't telling them. And it's all coming together, and it's our job as the external evaluator to take all this information, synthesize it, and not only show that this is working, but also to be able to suggest where there might be effort direct. Do parents need a little bit more information about classes in high school that students should take? And if so, we made recommendations last year. Those things are put in place. So it allows us to help with the evolution of this as it goes. It's exciting work. Thanks, Todd. Uh, my name is Matt Stilley. I'm the Director of Assessment and Research for the Division of Student Affairs here at Iowa State. Um, and while we've heard a lot about what's happening with students who have yet to got to be here. I think I'm the only one right now who's talking about the students once they get here, what's going to happen. And so we're going to talk about four different things relatively quickly because I fully understand that I'm your second to last speaker and that Dean Jolly and I stand between you and lunch. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk about importance. We're going to talk about some mechanisms for tracking, talk about how we use data and, and feedback loops, and then talk a little bit about what what are we planning for this year uh, to some point to answer your question what's going to happen to the support once they arrive on campus? Uh, I can tell you it is not going to go away at all. 
The, the reasons we track, and this is just kind of to give you a bit of an overview, we track success markers so that we have an understanding of what's working, what's not working, what people are enjoying, what they are not enjoying, so that we can continually form this program. This is all formative assessment, so that as we learn things, we can change directions in the middle of the game to enhance the experience that students are having. It also helps us scale our programs. It helps us guide where we need to show funding um, and drive funding and reallocate resources. It also allows us to better guide and support our students. We've got 15 coming this fall, or as many as 15 coming this fall. We have several hundred coming three years from now, and then four years from now, and then five years from now, and then six years from now. And so we're going to learn a lot from this first cohort. Even though it's small, a very qualitative data standpoint, very rich data sets of what's helping these students succeed and what they still need. And they also, if you think about it, and there's a lot of research around this, students are experts in their own success. They're also experts in their peers' success. And so they know what their peers, the folks who are going to follow them, are going to need. And so we can tap into that once they get here as well. Some of the things we'll track, we'll track grades. We'll track their grade point averages. We'll look at persistence rates, which is the extent to which students are moving on from year to year. We'll ultimately look at four, five, six year graduation rates. But we're also going to be looking at the extent to which they're engaged with us on campus. There's a lot of research out there that talks about the importance of being involved. Not just coming to college and going to class, but getting involved appropriately with, with student organizations, with fraternities and sororities, uh, with service organizations, as Roberta mentioned, with work on campus and things along those lines. So we'll be looking at those pieces. And we'll also be looking at the extent to which students are using our support resources on campus. We have a myriad set of resources on campus that will be directing students towards. And by tracking their usage of it, we'll be able to direct students who aren't using them sufficiently to say, hey, maybe this is a good idea for you. Once they get here, we can't compel them, but we can certainly show them the way. We can get them to where they need to be and let them take advantage of those places. And this is not a new thing. And this is not just something we're doing for ISU for you students. We track these programs across campus. So it's not as though we're singling out these 15 students. We do this in general for many of our programs. Again, so we can understand where we need to grow, where we need to change, where we need to make adjustments and things along those lines. Our outcomes and our metrics data gets us to a point to say, yes, we are doing what we have set out to accomplish. We have met our goals. It identifies areas for change and growth and enhancement, and it tells us where we need to direct additional resources, whether that's funding, whether that's people, whether that's things, whether that's space, so that we can, again, Fully, as, as Laura Durham would say, our Associate Vice President for Enrollment Management and Student Success, she would say we really want to wrap our arms around these students and make sure that they are getting what they need. Um, and so these data points will help us get to that point. We'll also be collecting feedback directly from the students, from some of the faculty they're working with, and from the staff who are working with them as well. Again, so we can begin to triangulate what's working, what's not, what else do we need, so that we can begin to ensure that our program is effective and that it's fully satisfying everyone's needs and desires. We'll feedback, we'll take that feedback, we'll loop it back into the work that we're doing. And again, this is a common and frankly an expected process for all of our programs so that we can really, in a sense, and inform what else is happening elsewhere. If we find something that works really, really well for the ISU for you Promise Scholars, there's no reason we can't replicate that elsewhere. Same going for if we find something else that's working well for a different group of students, we can bring that over and really support our students in this way as well. What we're trying to do for next year, we have a really, really broad goal, and it's very much in line with the goal of the K-12 program as well. This is really to get them to successfully get here. We want them to transition into the institution and feel a part of Iowa State and recognize that they are truly part of the Cyclone path. We want them to get connected to academic resources and involved in opportunities. It's not just saying, here's where they are. We actually want to connect them to those places and get them ready to go. We want them to complete their chosen degree program. It's not enough to get here. Access without success is an empty promise. We want them to be successful while they are here. And finally, once they finish their degree, we want them to get employed and or get admitted to graduate school. And so it is that whole cycle. It's not just getting them here. It's getting them through and setting them up to be successful after they graduate from Iowa State. Programmatically, what we're putting together is a work in progress. We have a campus-wide faculty and staff group um, led by Student Affairs that is building out this program. A handful of the things that are under consideration, these are neither exhaustive nor final, 
We, have, uh, we know we have a finite amount of time between now and when our students join us for orientation in June <coughs> and uh, for Destination Iowa State classes in August. But we're working relatively quickly to pull together um, how we're going to best support this program. Learning communities are paired courses, oftentimes shared living environments as well that can help students be uh, can help support students as they're moving forward. Peer mentoring, so having students paired just as the 12th graders are working with the 5th graders, having upper level students, sophomores, juniors, seniors, working with these incoming first year students to help them be successful. We're looking at how can we connect them to faculty and administrators. Research demonstrates that when students have a faculty or staff person that is invested in them, they are more likely to be successful. Uh, and then also connecting students to each other. Once they get here, they've been a bit of a cohort for uh, in, in recent years, they're going to be spread across campus. And so we want to make sure that we're able to bring them back together on occasion. So they can connect to one another, have those shared experiences, um, and draw on one another's energy and knowledge to be able to continue moving forward, as well as the student organizations and involvement opportunities. Finally, we will be assessing this program. We're going to look at some summative measures, some end of things, end of term, end of academic career measures. But we're also, like I said, we're going to be looking for feedback and input. We're going to be looking for faculty staff to guide us in terms of what is and is effective. And then we're going to continue to have ongoing dialogues so that as this program grows, as the K-12 program becomes larger, as our program on campus becomes larger, we want to make sure that we're in constant contact with uh, Dr. Bruna and her staff, with other staff members on campus, uh, and with the involved students to make sure that what we're offering them is truly going to get them to where they need. So I think with that, uh, I can turn it over to Sherry. Uh,